Sunday, July 3rd, 1 p.m. We have the third annual Ted Jones World Vegan Hot Dog Eating Contest. If you guys have not gotten your tickets yet, get tickets in this YouTube video. It's going to be absolutely lit. Guys, without further delay, we have for the third time on the Ted Jones World Podcast, just amazing person all around, Jack Brody. Jack, how are you, man? Nice to see you, T-Money. Nice to see you, buddy. Jack, thank you so much for coming on the podcast here. So, guys, today we both looked at the draws for Wimbledon that comes out tomorrow, Monday. We are ready for the tournament, and uh, we just figured we'd give our opinions and thoughts on the tournament. So, Jack, on the women's side, what do you think is the most exciting story this year? Well, I mean, this gal, Switek, she's pretty much winning everything. Uh, but then, of course, Serena's playing again. So... It gives you someone to root for or root against, all depending on how you feel about the Williams sisters, you know. Uh, she's still got the biggest serve in tennis, I would imagine. I haven't, I don't, that, that's, she's the unknown, you know. I don't know how much she's been practicing. I don't know what kind of shape she's in, or if she's been playing matches. But to me, that first round match is going to be the one to watch. I, I really want to see how Serena comes out. But other than that, Switek looks like she's all alone in, the, in, in all these tournaments. I mean, she's just... She's winning finals matches, you know, dropping like four games, five games. So I just don't see how you can give it to anyone but her. I also think that Serena coming in, they gave her a wild card for this event. So right. she's so she's not using protected points. And how you mentioned before we started recording here, there are no points in this tournament. So you're seeing some players on the men's side and the women's side who like have been injured in the past, just deciding not to play the event in total just because it won't count towards their ranking points. Now, I think that Serena Williams coming back off an injury and her not playing a lot of tournaments, this is a good tournament for her to come back, like her first tournament, Grass. She's always done her best at Wimbledon. So it's going to be an interesting matchup to see, like if uh, Serena does take it to the finals or the semifinals, actually rather against Switek. Uh, but I mean, I don't see... I don't see anyone beating either of those two, considering Iga Swiatek is on an incredible run. She just won the French Open uh, without dropping a set, Jack. And yeah, if you see, easily. like, her game, too, I think is going to be so perfect for grass. Just like even on clay, she was right on the baseline, bashing back and forth. So um, I would be surprised if anyone besides Iga Swiatek, the number one seed, took I agree. Game. I agree. Uh, Serena, it's going to be interesting. Like I said, the first round will be interesting. I want to see if her first serve percentage is up because if it's not up, I mean, if she's not over 50% first serves, I don't think she'll get past the first round. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, she will have in the third round a battle against uh, Karolina Pliskova, who's the sixth right. seed, who's like a big basher. So I think like that will probably be her toughest match, um, you know, within the first week before we get to the round of 16 and so on and so forth. But um, Serena, I just think in general is probably going to look like old Serena. I mean, I can't imagine her. I can't imagine her losing in the first round, even if her first serve percentage isn't great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Serena is always the one to beat, but what it's been a couple of years now, right? I mean, since before COVID, so I really just don't know. I mean, she's a total unknown right now. You know, I mean, how, how do you feel about Emma Raducanu? Um, I just, I can't, I feel about her like I do about some of the young guns and the men, like Team and Zarev and Sitsipas. She doesn't hit me yet. She doesn't hit me like she's got it all. She doesn't look very effortless when she plays. Uh, you know, I'm just not convinced yet that uh, she is the next one. Um, like I said, I think Switek is head and shoulders above all the other girls at the moment. Yeah, I agree. And we have uh, like Con Justine Hennen, you know? Yeah, we have Contivet. She's the number two seed. And like, I feel like we really have not heard much about her being no. involved in the draw, you know? So, I mean, my pick, I'd say, you know, like initially we were saying it's either going to be Switek or Serena Williams making a run, but I see the number one seed Switek taking yeah, this title. Now. Me too. Me too. The men's side is definitely more of a, uh, of a dramatic side. I mean, you've got the world's greatest, you know, Nadal and Djokovic heading off, you know, one and two Djokovic being the number one seed, but he, this is his surface. He must be furious after the French, um, and now Nadal's got him, what, by two, 22 grand slams. So he's got him by two now. So, you know, Djokovic is going to do everything in his power and not to go down by three. 
That'd yeah. be awfully tough to beat. Uh, but then again, you know, it's Nadal. I mean, that's all you can say. Nadal is a force, uh, just an incredible force to be reckoned with. I've never seen it. No one's any, ever seen anything quite like him. Yeah, it's, you know, I remember like talking to you years ago about Nadal, like whether it was, you know, he had a wrist injury or he had a knee injury, just always kind of counting him out. You know, and I feel like Nadal, for the most part, when he has an injury and then he comes back to a tournament, people are consistently counting him out. And it's crazy just to see year after year, he's still playing good ball and he's still just a different person on clay. Like nobody plays like Nadal on clay, even the final against Casper Ruud. I don't know how much of that match you saw. I saw but it. Like, but like Casper Ruud, you know, has been training at the Nadal Tennis Academy for the past five years. So you figure Casper has got like a lot of eyes on Nadal and Casper's coaches have been watching Nadal, but like, you got know, blown when, out. Yeah. When you go to Nadal Tennis Academy, I mean, Nadal's not going to let a guy who goes to the Tennis Academy beat him. You know, like that's just not going to happen. Like mm-hmm. Casper was playing, he was playing well the first 30 minutes of the match, kind of keeping up with him. But Nadal, just like the spin and the way he's able to cut off angles and just every ball he really goes for. Yeah, I just don't know what's going to happen. The grass doesn't bounce quite as funny as the clay. I was noticing on French, Rafa's ball. I mean, I would really hate to just even rally with him because his ball is just (laughs) bouncing left. It's bouncing right. I mean, I would have so much more fun hitting with a Federer or a Djokovic or a Zarev. You know, the ball bounces, kind of rises. You know, gravity takes effect. <laughs> I, none of the laws of, of nature seem to work with, with Nadal. I, I mean, his, his ball is such a funky ball to hit. And I would imagine that would be the most annoying thing on clay. It's like every ball is a bad bounce. It's like you can't really gauge where it's going to go. You know, like when you're on a hard court, maybe on grass, you know, it'll bounce and then come kind of right in your strike zone. Maybe yeah. like clay, it can dig into the ground and then bounce off at an yeah. angle that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But with that said, I still, even though I just can't root against Nadal, I still have to go with Djokovic this time. He's got the bigger serve. He's got a game that's more suited for hard court. Uh, I like your pick, uh, Riley Ope- Opelka. He's got a good draw. Now, Ry- good draw. I'm and now I'm seeing I'm seeing right here as we're looking at the draw. It looks that it's going to be Djokovic versus Riley Opelka in the round okay. of sixteen, and I think okay. that yep. right now could be one of the matches that I really am looking forward to. Me too. It, assuming that they both make it to the round of sixteen, uh, that's going to be a huge battle. I expect they will. I, I also, I really think about the points too. I wonder what effect that's going to have. I know the money is big this year, bigger than ever. It's like $60 million, some ridiculous amount. I mean, not obviously not what a comedian makes, but, but still big, big money, T money. <laughs> <laughs> I so, just, okay. I'm looking, no I'm points, also no points. I mean, it doesn't help your ranking. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I think at the highest level, it probably won't affect a Nadal or Djokovic because they want to win the title. They want to win the Grand Slam. The you Grand know, Slam. They for them, it's, for them, that's the most important part. But when you think of like a guy like Opelka, is he, you know, down in the dumps in the second and third round and he doesn't try that hard maybe because there aren't points involved. That could be a thought process potentially. But uh, we'll see when it happens, you know, with the number one and two guys in the world, you know, they're going to want to go um, guns blazing. So I'm looking also at another matchup here. Yannick Sinner. This is a first round matchup. Yannick oh, Sinner versus uh, Stanislas Warinka. Stanislas has not been around in a long time. Um, for those of you who do follow Stanislas, the guy's got three Grand Slam titles. Yep. He's been in the conversation of a top five player in the world for the past few years. How do you feel about that first round matchup? Yeah. I mean, I'm a big center fan, but I also love Warenka's backhand. So, I mean, I'm a huge Warenka fan. Uh, yeah, no, it's just beautiful one-hander. And it, it, it works well on clay, but he is also, what, about 36 years old? Uh, I don't see it. Yannick's young gun. Uh, this guy, Alcarez, he's a young gun. He could do some damage. I really like his game a lot. Love it. Love Reminds it. me of your game a little bit. You know, strong, fast, big, huge. He's smaller than me, though, so I got the serve on him is he really yeah i think he's like five nine five no. nine or five eight no no is no. he not let me look it no, up, while look you're still him talking. up i think he's closer to six two really? uh 
but uh, Alcaraz is he's he's he reminds me of Nadal. I mean, he could do he can emerge this tournament. He literally right. he's he's six tournament. he's six one by the way, Jack. You're right. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, he's not a not a little guy, and, he, and he's so strong. He reminds me of Rafa when Rafa was younger. I mean, uh, you know, it's hard to say when Rafa was younger. He's still a beast, but. Um, there's just something so spry and so strong about Alcaraz that he could be the one to, to emerge this tournament. I expect him to one of these grand slams, either this one or the U S open. So I'm seeing here. Also, we have a first round matchup between Andy Murray, James Duckworth, James Duckworth, not such a familiar player from Australia, but if Andy Murray does win that first round match, he's scheduled to play John Isner in the second round, which I think will be a great match. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, the last couple of times I've seen Andy, and I'm a huge Murray fan, huge, but he doesn't look the same since uh, his operation. He looks, no. he looks stiff and uh, he's not moving as well. He's not as effortless. His serve didn't really get any better since he's been hurt. That's always been an Achilles heel for him, I thought. Low first serve percentage for Andy. So sure. I just don't, I don't see Andy. Like I said, if anyone's going to emerge out of this thing, it might be an Alcarez. So let me ask you this. Do you think that Murray in having a game so, I don't want to say reliant on like his hips. Do you think that that has like, it's been negative for him in the yeah. past few years? Just because like people see, when people watch Murray, you can really see like every single shot is turning from the hips so much that it's maybe more so than other competitors. It's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, it's exactly what I think. Uh, he used to look so effortless and so beautiful moving from his core. And now on his groundies, he lifts the back foot a little early because you can tell it's not as loosey goosey in his hips as he used to be. And like I said, he just looks stiffer to me. He just doesn't look like the player he used to be. So I don't see him going too far. I hope he beats Duckworth in the first round because I, like I said, I am a big fan, but he's not the one to watch. He's not the one to watch. So Casper Ruud seeded three at this tournament and a guy he's playing with a guy who you have worked with before, Albert Ramos Vinolas. Yeah. So, yeah. Work, so worked working with, with Vino, working with Vinolas before you think that um, he has a chance to take out Ruud in this first round match. Yeah. Uh, once again, though, it's grass. So grass is such a funny surface. You know, it's one of my least favorite actually tournaments because grand slams because it starts off super slick, super fast. And then as you get to the quarterfinals, it gets all dug up and churned up and it starts acting like dirt more than it does grass. And uh, it's, it's, it's always the place we have the big upsets. You know, Wimbledon is always the one tournament where you have these huge upsets. We're in Opelka or an Isner or a Sam Query, the guy, also another guy I worked with uh, in the juniors. Uh, you know, they have a shot because it's so much serve, which is why I'm really, you know, going back to the women, dying to see if Serena's serve is, is still Serena's serve. Because, you know, the serve makes such a big difference. You know, it's one strike tennis. It's not like the French where the points last, you know, a couple of minutes, you know, 30, 40 ball rallies. This is grass. You know, you don't expect many rallies past five or six balls. So it's kind of first strike tennis. Cameron Norrie being the real first British guy coming yep. into the mix since Tim Hedman. He's the nine seed here. Uh, how do you feel about Cameron Norrie's game? You know, you went to Texas Christian University. He was one of the one of the few guys who's been really successful being in the top 20 playing college tennis. How do you feel about his game? Yeah, he's got a big game, you know, uh, he, he's I didn't I don't recall his draw right now. Who does he got? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. He's playing Pablo and Duhar in the first round. Who's from Good Spain. Match. And then if he wins, he'll play Tiago Montiero or I think his name, Jay Munyar. So he's either, he's going to be playing um, another Spaniard or he'll be playing a guy from Brazil in the second round, assuming he wins his first round match. Well, and, and that, that makes it look good for him because Spaniards are clay court players. So that makes it look good for him to get to the third round. Like you said, I really think, um, I think Opelka is that that fourth round match is going to be a biggie. I'd love that. And man, like I was telling you before, Opelka has been one of my more favorite guys that I've been watching these days. You know, you don't see a guy who's six foot 10, six foot 11 hit ground strokes like him. Like Opelka can hit ground strokes like a guy who's six foot three. He can really hang in the backcourt. Um, assuming that he has his mental game all intact 
and he can keep everything really focused, I can see him taking Djokovic to, I don't know, five sets. So Maybe. I'm, yeah, Maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm looking here, Jack, at another guy you used to work with and a guy who I actually played in two out of three sets one time in Orange, Stevie. California. Stevie. Stevie Johnson, man. I'm looking yeah. at I'm looking at Stevie yeah. Johnson's draw here. The best college tennis player of all time, Stevie Johnson, is playing Grigor Dimitrov before. They've played, um, they've definitely played before. I can't remember which tournaments, but I've definitely seen them in the draw together. How do you see Stevie Johnson versus Grigor Dimitrov looking? Uh, I, I gotta go with uh, Dimitrov, probably in four sets. Uh, once again, you got two monster servers, big servers, big forehands. The problem is Stevie just. His backhand side is a little weak and, you know, he'll start slicing and that's, you know, it's always a detriment to him is that side where Grigor, I would say, is a little bit more of an all court player. So, you know, you got to figure Grigor is going to take that. Tommy Paul versus Fernando Verdasco. That ma- that looks to be one of the best first round matches, in my opinion, next to Stevie Johnson versus Grigor Dimitrov. Yeah, I think Tommy Paul's got a real hot hand these days. I, lo- I love his game, and I can see him taking um, an older veteran in Verdasco. Even though Verdasco has done very well at Wimbledon, it just seems like Verdasco has been, like the past few years, he's just been kind of like a, a second or third round type of guy. You know, he was, it, it's crazy to see how um, his game really hasn't stood up the test of time. I, I would have thought that this is a guy who, you know, was going to be top 10 for years to come. Like when he was playing the doll at the Aussie Open and those legendary five setters. Um, But we never saw Verdasco really break into himself when he was consistently like a top seven, top eight player, you know? No, he's got a big forehand. Uh, I I just, uh, you just don't see him go that far. Uh, And Tommy Paul's had a hot hand lately. You yeah. know, his dad uh, is a coach at Carolina. Oh, Tommy Paul? Yeah, and about 50, 10 years ago, I sold him a, like six, uh, six of the Brody boards. And so I know his son probably used those plenty. Well, you also uh, played at UNC, correct? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, so Sam plays Barancas first oh, round. Okay, so that'll be an interesting matchup. Uh, yeah, Bar- really- Bar- Bar- you remember Barancas was the number one junior in the world probably like 15 years ago. Yeah, and the winner of that has to play Nadal, though. Oh, okay. How do you so, feel about Jensen Brooksby? Um, I don't really love his game. It, it's uh, I wouldn't call it effortless, but he's sir a beast. You know, he played out at the Wild Academy with uh, one of the boys I coach now, uh, Nick. And Nick's played him a couple of times. And yeah, he says he's a really tough kid, tough junior, uh, but not an effortless game, but a big game. You know, he, he's definitely a force. I just don't just don't know if he's got the strokes the other guys have you know brooksby just... he definitely he definitely has a lot of wins for sure under his belt but it just seems like he's such a counter puncher you know yeah uh yeah i just don't see him having a very diverse game i think Berrettini's a guy you can't overlook though yes i think that see. guy's got a great game and he could do some damage here as well like i said he my outliers are him and Alcarez, one of those guys could really surprise everybody, I think. Well, saying speaking of outliers, though, I think when talking about that, you got to also look at the guys who are unseated. Talking about a guy like Nick Kyrgios, who could come in and win a few rounds, which I would love to see. Love to see Kyrgios do that well. Jordan Thompson, you know, we'll see how his draw is. Um, and Jack Sock qualified for the event. Man. I saw that. That's crazy. Good for Jack. I mean, it was crazy. We saw him win Paris. I think it was 2018, 2019. And it looked like Jack was going to be a top 10 player to stay. And then I don't want to say he got too focused on doubles, but doubles has really been his, um, his go to. Yep. So, um, we'll see what happens there, but I mean, overall, I mean, I think it's going to be, it's going to be in the dull Djokovic. Maybe we'll see Taylor Fritz get a little bit deep in the tournament, but I think it's going to be guys who have consistently done well on grass in the past. Maybe Sam Query can make some noise, but then again, once he plays in doll in the second round, it's going to be tough. Now um, we did see, I, maybe I was actually with you during this particular point, but Sam Query playing a doll in Wimbledon and they went like five sets a few years ago. It was a crazy match. We did see that. Uh, that was when you and I were, were hanging out together. And then at the U S open, I think he took a first, he took the first set off Nadal. 
That's what it was. Uh, and then he took Djokovic, but that was a whole long story that we don't need to bring up uh, uh, Djokovic, you know, being up all night, didn't get any sleep that night. And Sam took him down at Wimbledon in the early round. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the thing. Like I said, it's not my favorite tournament because it really favors the big, tall guys. And you're going to see either an Isner or a Sam Query. Uh, Kyrgios, I'm glad you picked him out. He's always fun to watch. Uh, one of my favorite players to watch. You know, he's like the, the Nastasi or the Rios. You know, he's the bad boy. And, and he's kind of makes tennis fun a little bit, especially at a place like Wimbledon where everyone's, you know, snooty in their white clothes and everything. Kyrgios comes in and he's a madman. And I love that. Um, but yeah, and Jack, he said he said in an interview recently that he feels he's the top five player in the world right now on grass. I read that. I read that. And he really, like I said, he's got a shot to pull big upsets here. I think a lot of it depends on your draw. Like I said, Opelka's got a great draw. He meets Djokovic in the round of 16. So you're pretty sure he's going to get there. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. And, and you can't count Isner out. I mean, I've seen him live. Uh, his serve is ridiculous. And, you know, Djokovic, every time he beats Isner, it's like 7-6, seven, 7-6, six, seven, six, seven, six. So it's not an easy, you know, it's not an easy win for even the best players in the world. Yeah, so uh, I think I think um, Djokovic is big. Um, his big challenge is going to be in the fourth round if he plays Isner. I, uh, no, no, know. Opelka. Excuse me. Yes, if he plays yeah, Opelka. I agree. And then, and then you know, we'll see Chilich play Nadal in the round of sixteen. But I don't really see Nadal having any difficulty there in terms of taking Chilich. Um, you know, but on that on that front, Jack, I, I really do think that it's going to be a Djokovic Nadal. I mean, they're both easily going to make the quarters, I think. Unless Djokovic, like we just said, um, loses to Opelka. I think we're going to see them there. Um, I'm going to be interested to see how Ali Asim does. He plays Maxime Cressy, the big server in the first round, the UCLA he's really guy. A, yeah, he's had a great year. He had a great French. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's still fun. Like I said, a couple little things still weigh at me. And one is, is Nadal going to be healthy the whole time? I mean, you always have to ask that question because he's had problems with his ankles and this and that, and, uh, you know, so that's a big if. And then Djokovic, you know, he hasn't played that many matches in the last couple of years, you know, ever since he got tossed out of the U S open on that fluky on, yeah, on that fluky thing, you know, I still, for those of you who don't know what Jack's talking about, Djokovic got pissed and hit a ball like in the air back and it hit a line judge right in the throat, right in the yeah. esophagus. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't even that pissed. I mean, he really, I look at it over and over and over and I just thought it was a little bit, the crime, you know, the punishment didn't really fit the crime. Maybe they take a game away from him, but to throw him out of the tournament, he wasn't hitting it in anger. I mean, he wasn't hitting it in anger and he didn't even hit it that terribly hard. It was sort of a typical, yeah, I'm out of here next, next, you know, switching sides. Uh, so I don't know. But, you know, I, I tell you what, the, the other part that really gets me is why we don't have points in Wimbledon. You know, we keep saying, oh, there's no points this year. Well, the banning of the Russian players, that's a really weird thing. I mean, it's not like Medvedev, you know, is running around, you know, with a Putin flag in his hand. I kind of feel bad for those guys. Medvedev would have been the guy to pick. I mean, the guy is playing great tennis. He's a brilliant player. Same with Rublev. I mean, you're missing two big guys right there, two of the best players in the world, and they're not playing. And I, I kind of personally think it's a shame myself. I don't want to get too political here, but, I mean, you can't help where you're born. Like, you can't help what color your skin is or, you know, what religion you are. You're just born into it. So to punish these guys, I... I uh, I was surprised the ATP took the points and the WTA took the points away. But on the other hand, maybe, maybe that was the right thing to do. I, I just, that really gets to me. I still wonder, you know, how can you just ban players? Uh, I mean, to take their flag away, you know, don't, don't show their flag or whatever, but just to not let them play. How do you feel about that money? I'm just curious. If they're not going to have the Russians or the Belarusians play, then they should have the tournament as they, they should stick with their guns, right? They should be like, all right, this is Wimbledon. It's for points. It's for money. But these Russians and Belarusians are not allowed to play. They shouldn't be like, well, the Russians and uh, 
you know, Belarusians aren't going to play. And also we're not going to allow points at this event. So it's okay that you guys aren't playing. You know, it's almost like they're overcompensating for it. And I think that it wasn't like Wimbledon said, though. It wasn't Wimbledon. It was the WTA and the ATP that said, no, no, we're stripping you of the points. So it's not like Wimbledon had any choice in the matter. They were stripped of the points. I think that's why they bumped the money up so much because they had to make it, you know, a reason to play. Like I said, I've never seen so much money in a tennis tournament. I think like in the Olympics, like they were doing without the Russian flags, they should have done something like that. Similarly, it's unfair. You're right. Uh, I mean, if you're not denouncing Putin, I mean, it's not like any of these Russians or Belarusians were out there being like, we don't support Putin. I should be able to play. You know, it's kind of like, it, it's just a, it's a very political move and it's tennis, you know, it's not politics. So I think yeah, that we should address I, I it. As that. Like I said, I, I actually, uh, I'm into it a little more than I would normally be. I, I coach a guy from Belarus right now. He was number one in the country in the boys uh, in the 16s and 18s and 14s. In fact, he has, you know, like this, uh, I play with him a lot. He, he's on a lot of my videos lately. Uh, great guy. And he has a win over Dog Pulov in the 14s, 6 0 6 0. Oh, and oh. Love. what happened with that guy? Uh, he's still in it. I mean, dog, he, but he beat him. Oh, and oh, in the 14. So I'm working with this guy now. Great guy. He's 35. And, you know, we talk about it all the time and, you know, he's kind of like everyone else. He's just a peon. He's like, Hey, you know, I don't know what they're doing over there and why they're doing it. And, you know, there's, you know, there, there are two sides to every story and, and, you know, him being from Belarus, you know, I, I get it from the first hand, you know? So it's kind of a, like I said, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth a little bit because I actually know somebody from there. And yeah. it does seem like they're pretty innocent. I mean, he's just, like I said, you can't help where you're born. And it's like our politics, you know? I mean, I don't, I don't think I can relate to, you know, anybody in the administration, you know? <laughs> I'm me and I'm out here grinding every day and they're, you know, they're on DC, which is a whole different place, you know? It's, so I don't know. So that, that's that's kind of bothers me. I don't know. It's going to leave a little bit of an asterisk on this tournament, I think. I, I really agree. do. So for this tournament, would you say you had Igas Witek on the women's side and Djokovic on the men's side? You know, assuming they don't get with, they don't get uh, upset. Well, you know, it's always a can't root against Nadal. It's always going to be a toss up. But yeah, I, I would say Djokovic is kind of due for this one, but <clears throat> I won't bet against Nadal. There's just no Especially way. with no Medvedev, uh, we do have some of the younger guys, but I do think if Djokovic gets past Opelka in the round of 16, that's going to be his hardest matchup. And Nadal, um, I don't want to say Nadal has one hard matchup just because Nadal, after winning the French and maybe he has like, he has some kinks in his body that he needs to loosen up. Nadal, you can never really fully 100% sure say that he's going to win the tournament, any tournament, you know, when it's different, when you think about Djokovic, like people can hammer Djokovic as their favorite, you know? Yeah. Um, I must say, I do miss Roger. We don't, we don't mention his name. We Roger. talked about that on the beginning, man. I, I mean, miss him so much. And this is his tournament, you know, I mean, he's just so well, he's great on every surface, but he's so great on grass the way Sampras used to be, you know, one of the few guys that can serve in Bali and the saber coming in on behind the serve. I mean, he's just, yeah. And he's just so great to watch. You know, I think he's so great for the game. Uh, but like I said, this tournament has always been funny and it's funnier this year because uh, of the no points, no Medvedev, no Rublev. Yeah. And there's a few other Russian and Belarusian players that aren't playing. So, I mean, you're really missing out on, uh, on both the men and the women's sides of some great players. Uh, so it's a little hard to call. But yeah, I mean, you have to go with the top seats again. Uh, I know you're a big Opelka fan, but I don't see him getting past Djokovic. Oh, I hope he does, man. I hope he does, though. Yeah, there'll be a lot of people rooting for him. Uh, I think uh, I think Alcarez, you got to watch out for this guy. I really think he's going to do something special, uh, if not this season, next season. But uh, he just seems to be, you know, have the best strokes and the fastest guy out there. And uh, he looks like the next Nadal. He really so Jack, does. You've been in, you've been in the game for so many years, man. You've seen so many different types of players. The game evolve, you know, generation after generation. 
Would you say that, you know, if you were coaching a 16 or 17 year old who was a top guy, you know, top, let's say 20 in ITFs, which for those of you who don't know, top 20 in ITF means you're top 20 in the world and 18 and under. If you saw a guy who was 20, let's say you were coaching a kid who was almost 18 years old, he's 20 in ITFs. Would you say that now the path is to go to college, to spend three or four years in college, develop your game and then start playing these grand slams? Or would you say at this point, say that guy who is 20 years, 20 um, in the world, he should go pro. What do you think it looks like these days with so many guys who have been playing in the NCAA, um, you know, doing well? Doing well, but you know, Sam Query didn't, right? He went to three months at USC, dropped out, uh, got a couple of rounds in the US Open and never looked back. Um, and then you got Stevie Johnson who never lost a set his last year of college and won the NCAA is what, three or four times in a row. And he hasn't really cracked in much of an egg. I mean, his first year out was okay. I think he was top 50. But since then, he hasn't had much luck. Um, it's really hard to say. I guess, I mean, I'm a big believer in education, but I think if you got it, you got to get out there and, and use it because you could get hurt. I mean, look what happened to Zara recently with the twisted ankle. I mean, that's a terrible injury. He might not come back from that. I mean, really, it would be very difficult. It's always difficult to come back from an injury. So I think you got to kind of go, go, go for the money when you have your shot. I really do. But with that said, it's such a tough road that if you're not, you know, if you're not really a contender, it's probably better to stay in school, get an education, because that's a much easier way to make money. I mean, it's uh, if you're not in the top 100, you're really not making any money. And it's tough to say these days, like who can be a contender now? You know, if you look at a guy's game, who has an all around kind of game and doesn't have that one big shot. I mean, is he going to be, you know, consistently top 100 in the world? It's tough to tell these days. Like if you watch a guy like came Cameron Nori, who played at Texas Christian university, it'd be very hard to watch him four years ago and be like, Oh yeah, this kid will be top 10 in the world. You know, just cause he doesn't have that one massive forehand, that big serve. He just kind of has every shot. But if you watch him hit from the ground practicing, you're not like, Oh, well that guy is going to be top 10 for sure. You know, when we were growing up, uh, I was working with Stevie and Sam Query, and we never even thought of those guys necessarily as going on to being pros. We just we were always thinking college. And the guy to watch was Donald Young. And look what happened. Donald Young, no one's ever heard of anymore, you know, unless you're a real tennis aficionado like we are. Uh, you, you don't know who he is. And Sam got in the top 20. And Stevie Johnson got in the top 50 and, you know, who would have guessed it because they were, you know, uh, Donald Young was dominating the juniors. So it's really hard to say, you know, uh, what's going to happen. And maybe there's a little bit of luck involved. Maybe, you know, a big win here and a big win there. Uh, staying healthy. That's a biggie. Big one. Uh, so it's really hard to say. Um, it's sports. It's kind of a crapshoot. And that's, Kind of why we like it. You know, guys come out of nowhere. And like this guy, Alcaraz, I had never heard of him a year ago until I saw him at Indian Wells. Crazy. I mean, at Indian Wells, I'm like, who is this guy? Did He's you see him guy. live at Indian Wells? You were there? No, I did not. But I, I watched every match I could on TV. And I just was like, who is this guy? And even though the talk of the town was Taylor Fritz, because he won the tournament. I mean, I couldn't stop thinking about Alcaraz. I'm like, this guy is something else. And like I said, he's my next pick. Uh, I'd love to see him break out in this tournament. Has he got a pretty good draw? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, he does. He does have a pretty good draw. Um, he is seated. I believe he's seated six at this event. He's going to be a guy who's top five in the world. No doubt in my mind within like the next or for the next two years. You know, I really think that he's going to he's going to stick it out there. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he's going to be in the in the year end championships. So Jack, he's, he's seated number five. He plays um, Jan Leonard Struff, who's like the big serving, big hitting German guy. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but then um, in the second round match, we'll play Fabio Fognini, which will be a test. And then, um, you yeah, know, but he, I mean, he's a real clay quarter. So. so he's looking to play um, Djokovic or Opelka in the quarterfinals, depending on who wins that round of 16 battles. It's really hard to say on grass because Shit happens on grass, you know, people slip, they fall. Like I said, the court, the integrity of the court gets so poor towards the middle of the tournament, second week. Uh, 
So, you know, it's just, it's, it's really going to be interesting. It's, it's all about first serve percentages. So, so we'll yeah, see, man, really but if you have, but we're putting, we're putting a gun to your head, Mr. Brody, who do you got in the men's and who do you got in the women's? The women's swipe tech. I'll take her all the way in the men. Uh, I'll stick with Djokovic. <laughs> Some boring stick ass picks after all this, but you know what? They're both the one seed. And I realistically don't think I can argue against that. I mean, unless we see Nadal sneak in there, but I'm going to have to go with both number one seeds too, man. Yeah, I think uh, Djokovic has got to get by Opelka and then Alcaraz and Nadal. Uh, well, his side of the draw looks a little bit more positive for him. Uh, I guess when he, he played, play, well, when he plays Sam Query in the second round, that could be a potential challenge. But um, besides that, playing Chilich in the round of 16, I think he'll take that. Where's then, Kyrgios? Where's Kyrgios? Kyrgios is playing um, a wild card job in the first round, and then he'll take on Krajinovic from, from Serbia in the second round. Krajinovic okay. has kind of been a hot player. Uh, yeah. He made he made the finals of Paris like three years ago, so I'd be interested to see what happens with him too. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see Kyrgios go far. He's Me fun. Too. Everyone loves Kyrgios. Jack, thank you so much for joining us here on the Ted Jones World Podcast. And before we get out of here, man, uh, why don't you shout out some of the stuff that you do, man? You're doing a ton of interesting stuff, as you guys can see here, living at the 45 degree angle and in the bottom left corner of your screen, Brody Tennis. So, Jack, kind of um, talk to us for a moment about what those two things mean. All right. I'll give a shameless plug. Why not? Uh, money. I mean, you inspired me with your podcast, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, living at the 45, I've probably done about 25 of them now. And I talk to tennis pros, players uh, all over the world. Uh, it really has been an incredible show. We talk to tennis authors, guys on the tour, uh, guys just off the tour, lots of other coaches. Uh, so that's our podcast we do every week. Uh, I drop one every uh, every Thursday. And then Brody Tennis, I've been really pleased with. It's only been up less than a half a year. And we've got, you know, close to 100 members. And I'm giving virtual lessons uh, where people send me their videos all the time. And I analyze and I, uh, I tell them, you know, this is this is this is where you got to go with this stroke. And this is this is what you got to do. So BrodyTennis.com has really been a lot of fun, what you might call reinventing of myself. You know what I mean? I'm still on the court. People fly in from all over the world. Uh, I had people in from Canada a couple of weeks ago. Last week, someone from uh, North Carolina. Today, I've got someone else from North Carolina, a different part of North Carolina. So I still get on the court here and there, but it's really, uh, I'm a virtual coach now, and it's been a lot of fun. And like I said, I love doing the podcasts and, and you were really inspirational on that end because you you interviewed me first. And I thought, well, this is fun. I Jesus, money can do what I can do. This, <laughs> you know? And dude, you also have a lot of interesting shit to say. So for those of you who don't know, Jack was my tennis coach for about eight years, I'd say about eight yep. years. About. And living at the 45 is basically hitting everything at a 45 degree angle, how sports is really um, defined as, you know, that's how they line up the golf ball. That's, you know, that's how they line up the free throw when you're shooting a basketball. The 45 is really a, a quintessential angle that people don't talk about, but we sure do. And money, I'm still your coach. I still think you might make a comeback, you know, enough with the comedy. You know what I mean? Get back on the court and, you know, do something. Yeah, absolutely. Jack, thank you so much for joining us as always, man. Your third time on here. And um, in my opinion, this was the best one. So guys, check out Wimbledon this week. And next week, it's going to be a fun tournament or one of us. Let us know. Ted Jones World at gmail.com. And Jack, what's um, a good email that um, you use for your business? Brody at BrodyTennis.com. Love it. Guys, and check them out. J-A-C-K-B-R-O-U-D-Y. Jack, thanks so much. Got anything else for us or what? No, I'm good, Team Money. It's always a pleasure talking to you, buddy. Thank you so much, Jack. Um, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for yeah, tuning in. Enjoy. Enjoy the <laughs>